In spite of the efforts of law enforcement personnel, poaching continues to play a devastating role in the disappearance of sea eggs from Barbados' shores. It's greed on the part of the, um, the, the consumer who is engaging in buying the sea eggs illegally. The people who are buying it are just as guilty. And I would like to see the day now where the law would address both of these. If you don't have a market, you can't have, you can't have a supply. And it's greed on the part of those few fishermen who continue to poach. So the many are suffering for the few. Many of the poachers actually operate um, pretty much in, in rings, poaching rings, where they have a system of watch out, of lookouts, um, who will warn the poacher that um, somebody is coming. During my time, we may have had times that we've seen people and we were suspicious that they've never been involved in it. But I actually see them with the, the sea eggs. It was, it was a bit difficult because they would realize the vessel was coming before it got to them. And most of them would tend to cut loose the bags, which we found was uh, one of the trains that they got to doing. And so you didn't have anything to recover to hold them on. You can tell where a guy is honestly engaged in diving from when he's engaged in and illegal activities such as sea poaching. And um, they were using various techniques. They were using buckets so that as soon as they saw the Coast Guard or the police, they would probably let them down, let it go to the bottom and move away from the area, right? So these guys have used various techniques, but they all make sure that they dispose of the cargo on the approach of the police or the Coast Guard. That they have other systems that they've developed to, as I said, dissociate themselves very quickly from the catch. For example, they have quick release mechanisms sometimes that allow them to detach the, just um, if they have the maypole, just cut the, the, the net bags containing the animals and they will just fall to the bottom. So basically they're, they're caught without, not in possession of, of the sea eggs. Because we, we've had one occasion where we were successful in being able to recover an excess of 300 and something shells where the guys actually cut them loose but they remained over them. Fortunately that day we had uh, two, two divers on board and we went overboard and we recovered six bags. So we were able, we were able then to arrest two of the guys. There are other fisheries out there, okay, you have um, lobsters, you have um, Conks, and you have the smooth called sea cat. These are also viable industries. These are things that they can take part in. Yes, the mere fact that they can dive sea eggs that show that they can also dive the other entities. So it's just a matter of um, being creative. But I think they're looking for the easy way out. Because sea egg is just, just sitting on the bottom. <laughs> Whereas we have to search no fight. for the others. No fight at all. None. You just pick him up and he's gone. It's so, it's so attractive that the same guy who is convicted today and fined, he will then be looking often to see, okay, how much poaching do I have to do to pay the fine? So as such, it is not so much an a economic deterrent uh, for him unless some very stiff fines are put in place. The government has to recognize the, the importance of its role, and I'm thinking particularly of those who are responsible for the uh, prosecution of poachers and for in, in ensuring that when poachers are brought before the court, they are dealt with appropriately. That coupled with community service, and a possible course in sea egg biology would be the way forward for some of the offenders. They don't like to know that they go out there and they dive with impunity, that they don't worry. I, 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 like, I like to think that if I miss it today, I stand a chance tomorrow. So that's the philosophy I operate on.